All right, guys, this is our first taping of 2024. We've been circling this one for a while. It's on a lot. We've been circling the airport. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, down. It's on Max. It's It pops on the different ones. It's always on cable somewhere. And it is the definition of a rewatchable. It's an improbable rewatchable. Yeah. This is a movie that did not get nominated for Best Picture. Um, it's intense. I think people really love the first 25 minutes of it. But for the most part, we're like, hmm, not sure how I felt about that one. Definitely good. Denzel was great. But then it has this tail van over the next 11 plus years and it becomes a rewatchable. How does a movie that's this unsparing about addiction that has not exactly like the most uplifting ending in the world, how does this become a rewatchable for us? Because it's the perfect Saturday afternoon movie. It draws you in. It's got great scenes. Like great, great, great scenes. scenes in the movie. It starts off. Mm -hmm. With one of the great scenes in movie history. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have happy, lots of spots in the pod for it. Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It starts off with one of the great scenes ever. <laughs> uh, and then you, 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 from then on, we're just cooking, right? Yeah. Um, but then the really, the only thing about the movie that keeps it together is the fact that it's, because it gets a little uneven and it gets yeah. a little weird. It's two movies, but there's all these great, scenes that are like connecting it together him going off off out of his mind and people coming back and going at him you're always going ooh oh ah so you can never quite turn it off yeah and that's what makes it rewatchable right all the way to the end of it is this a movie that plays a lot better once you know how the story goes 100% I, I so agree. when you first see it 35 minutes in, you're like, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. what is happening? Mm -hmm. And then Kelly Riley and and the hospital and everything that happens and and Hugh and, and the, the whole hearing and everything. And it's really disorienting. It's very disorienting to watch a movie where the climax happens 21 minutes into the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's, it's actually... Or for Van, four minutes into no, the movie. No, for Van, four, <laughs> four minutes Four seconds in. into the movie. <laughs> so, I, I think that the more I've watched this movie the more I've enjoyed it because you're used to the ride. You actually know where it's going after the plane crash. And you can kind of start to pick up on all these little details that make it a much deeper experience. So, interesting. So, the fact it was might have been disappointing the first time you watched it, and then the fact that you kind of were used to... You no, know, it's not even disappointing. It's like, you. It, that, I remember the first time I saw this. It was in the Cinerama Dome, and so, I, yeah. for the same year. I could not get over the plane crash. I was like, you expect me to watch a movie? After seeing that, mm -hmm. like, besides all the stuff that probably most viewers are thinking about their own nervousness about flying, if they have it. Yeah. But you're just like, my adrenaline is pumping so hard, and now I'm supposed to watch this, like, eight, like, eight-minute scene with James Badge Dale smoking in a stairwell. Like, <laughs> there is nothing but a come down after that plane crash. But if you watch it enough times, you're like, oh, now I understand the rhythms of the movie. Yeah, the, what did you say? It was the first 25, last 25, or Craig said that? Yeah, Craig said that. But what, what I think one of the reasons, I think this is one of my favorite movies the last 15 years, and I would not have even guessed that five years ago. But it reminds me of like we, Chris and I, and I, I guess you did too, growing up in the albums generation, mm -hmm. where you would just listen to an album over and over again. And it would be the first three songs that jumped out initially, the ones that were the obvious hits. And then you'd be like, no, I also like this song too. Yes. And then you'd argue with your buddies about it. And then after you spent like, a year or so with the album, you'd be like, oh. There's no skips on this. Yeah. Man, that, that that fourth song that I never really liked, I kind of dig that song now. Yes. That's how I feel about five of the fight scenes in the middle. Like, I really like the hospital. I like the cancer guy. Yeah. I think that scene's really, the wisdom that he's spouting and just in general, I actually feel like that's the heart of the movie, but you would never guess that you'd have to watch it 11 times. So I think I liked it more. It always used to bother me before because he pops in and then he pops out. You never see him again. It was almost like a like he was like an apparition. I was wondering, like, did he was he really there? Did they conjure him? Did they make him up as Denzel? Oh, Jamie? interesting. So, I, I think I got it more the like this time that I watched it. But there are a lot of things where the movie just kind of lost itself. When I was first watching, in it, a I'm good like, way or a bad way? Well, now just in now it's just flight. It's not good or bad. It's just flight, right? Watching it this time, I realized that John Goodman is not in the movie as much as I thought that he was. He's in three scenes. Right. So, and then, on top of this, the love story between her and Denzel, it just just does not work. It, it is just a large portion of it. it it's, a, it's a completely different movie. 
Um, is it good that it didn't work though? Because I actually think that's part of the point of this movie. Because in a normal movie, it works and they end up together and she goes to visit him in prison in the end. And it's like part of this. The whole point with this is that he can't have anybody. Like his his life shot. I think it works. Done. I think the I think another reason why people probably bristled at this movie is that it is a true anti-hero. Like you never really wind up being like whips cool. Like I like whip. Like, and it's different than Alonzo in Training Day because you don't have a Jake character. Like, kind of the Kelly Riley character is a little bit of the audience avatar, but she's got so much of her own shit going on. And like you said, pretty much vanishes about two thirds into the movie when she leaves him after he goes off the wagon so yeah. hard. Yeah, but you had to go to Yellowstone. Basically trapped inside of Whip's skin the entire movie, and it's a super uncomfortable place to be. Yeah. You know. But that the payoff of that is, is when yeah. the door starts jiggling in the hotel room, and yeah. you're like, "Oh no, yeah, and you oh no, and then he just goes oh don't, for don't, it. don't, no, come I, on." I think that I feel that Whip deeply got the fucking shaft. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, should save this for Stephen A. Smith out of stake. It's on there. <laughs> I'm gonna get to it. when I watch it. When I watch it now, because it's in the movie all the time. Whip didn't do anything. Whip. Coming up next. Yes. <laughs> he didn't. Like whip. Did Whip's, whip's alcohol problem give him yeah. courage? Like, Should all pilots drink screwdrivers? I'm just be honest with yeah. you. Like, it, it, I remember uh, I was uh, talking to somebody. There was a point where there was an interview about this, and they were talking about the fact that maybe the fact that he was on drugs made him more intuitive and helped him fucking fix Well, it definitely plane. gave him less fear, and you needed less fear to land the plane. Yeah, so like... At the end of the day, Whip's apologizing and stuff. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you apologizing for? You saved everybody on the plane. Yeah, but that's what makes it so interesting is the difference between, like, morality and legality, right? Like, legally, he's somewhat indemnified. Like, they've gotten his toxicology report removed from the case right. and everything. But morally, it probably wasn't right that he did what he did, right? Probably wasn't right. I'm a results-driven motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it, 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 it's like when Dan Campbell goes for it on four on two-point conversion from the seven. If yeah. it goes in, Van's like, great call, great yeah, call, exactly. I love it. It's is when he my favorite one of my favorite scenes. Like I said, just intensely rewatchable scenes in this movie. One of my favorite scenes is when he's talking to uh, the the fellow fire ticket Margaret or whatever, and he goes, and they're at the funeral. He goes, Just let you know. That could have been your fucking son. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, if not for me. And I'm like, just go say whatever he wants you to say. You owe him your life and your son's life. And then at the end, he's taking all of this goddamn, oh, I was a terrible person and stuff. Maybe, but I ain't never saved 96 motherfuckers. You have. Right. So, right. you know, I don't know. Well, two things are going on when they make this movie. It's um comes out in 2012. It's the height of the anti-hero renaissance, right? Sopranos has ended, but we still have Breaking Bad and Don Draper, depending on how you feel about him. And just in general, we're, we're, we're in this whole world where the anti-hero is back. And, mm -hmm. and so he kind of feels like he both fit in, but it was a little redundant compared to what else is going on. The other thing is, movies are really starting to change in a bad way. And Brad Gray, who was one of the people who got this movie done, it was the kind of movie that... It had Denzel, it had Robert Zemeckis as director. It had a big plane crash. It was an expensive movie, and the guys had to shave their salaries to make it. But Brad, Brad Gray said at the time, you want to have the big franchises and blockbusters that can really rule the day, and you want to make pictures that you care about. There should always be room for movies like yeah. this. And that's, I think, one of the reasons I love this movie is it's from the last 12 years, but it's a movie that they really made in the 80s and 90s, the movies that we talk about on this pod. I don't know if they make I would even say movies that Whip's, like this anymore. Whip's a 70s guy. Like Whip, yeah. Whip even feels like somebody that like Nicholson or Hoffman would play in the 1970s. As Isn't like, this like an Apple show now and it's not that good? And well, it's like it's an alcoholic pilot and we have one star. We put it in the big box. I don't see. That's then, the thing is that I don't know. It's not, they would not have not to be good. about something else than his addiction because this is such a searing look at alcoholism that I don't think people would be like, let me, let me sign up for six hours of that. Yeah. It's a movie that's, like, about the movie. It's about the actual story. It's not about... It's not the type of movie that's a star-making vehicle that that for somebody or it goes and gets you an Academy Award or it's not going to sweep the Oscars. It's a movie that's about itself. 
And that's, to me, a lot of times the type of movie that they don't make anymore. Like, every single film that somebody does now is either, like, a big, huge prestige play, that odd Netflix type of situation where they just want you to watch it yeah. over and over and over again. Um, or it's a superhero joint, which I'm not dissing a superhero joint, so obviously I love them. But just making a movie that's, like, about the story that's a tweener. All these great performances, all of these, all of these great happenings, but it's not going to be remembered as one of the five greatest films of the year. It's just a good, but solid But meanwhile, movie. it was. Oh, was it? So, no, I mean, in, in if you go back and you look at that year, I think it's one of the best five films. It's very similar to Castaway, which Zemeckis also yeah. did. Castaway had the same thing. I saw in the theater. I liked it. I had some issues with it. But then it started to come on cable and became one of my favorite movies of the century. And it has a lot of, the, even the ending feels a tiny bit similar where kind of leaves on this ambiguous, hey, he learned his lesson, but, you know, it's floating into the abstract. But even that feels a little stapled on, you know, like that that very, very ending of the speech in the prison and then this son coming to visit him feels like almost like, it's like a little bit like, man, we have to put like a little bit of cushioning on this. Yeah, like, like the test, audience like hated whip. Yeah. 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 Like it tested bad. Denzel. You guys familiar. have heard of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did the Denzel draft. For, How many Denzels are we up to? On we're in double figures now, yeah. I think. We did the Denzel draft and <coughs> CR, like, he was like Harbaugh. He was stealing my signals. Yeah, I had Connor in the back you watching did, your tape. You, <laughs> you did. You took flight, I think, was your first pick. It might have been, yeah. And I was like, oh, Who's the Connor CR. of the ringer? <laughs> <Connor's> <laughs> we Dallas. need to hire one. <laughs> um, but uh, where does this rank for you in the Denzel? Is this Denzel Mount Rushmore for you? Because for me, it is. I'd certainly his, I think. I should say rewatchable. I'd Mount say Rushmore. arguably his last great performance. In since flight, has he done anything better than? No, I don't think so. No. I no. never, I never saw that. Somebody, Shakespeare joint. somebody like Sean's going to dive through the wall and make a fences argument, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I, it, I mean, are we talking about just performances? Performance. Or are we talking about the movie? I mean, he's pretty unassailable in fences. Like it was, it's a fucking I, great. I, I think he's, I think he's unbelievable in this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And but there's we'll, more to do in this movie. This is about it, off all the top of, of my head. I would Denzel say pitches. Alonzo from Train Day, Malcolm X, this, and take your fourth. Like pick your fourth. I think he got game has to be in there yeah. for me. He got for, game for, to me. Mo Better Blues. Obviously, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Probably my favorite movie of all time. But this is Denzel. It's oddly one of the most challenging roles for him. Yeah, to see him as this much of a curmudgeon. You know what I mean? Like, this much of a, I don't give a fuck. Like, the, where the scene with Kelly Riley where he says, you know, at least I don't suck dick for drugs. It's like, Jesus Christ, have I ever quite seen him like yeah. that before? I mean, Alonzo was just very one-dimensional, but this was a guy whose addiction was bringing out the worst of him. Yeah. And you hadn't really seen him be no, that. And Alonzo had, like, swag. Yeah. And Whip doesn't, you know? Whip, Whip's, like, Whip's carrying water weight because he drinks so much. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, Whip is is beat up. Like, and it's a really, uh, it's a really brave performance when you think about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's pretty, just the amount of, like, inebriated acting he has to do and mm -hmm. just, but making it not seem like, oh, this guy is in touch with some sort of poetic strain of his brain while this is happening. It's like, no, he's just fucking, he's a fucking mess, you know? I you got a little fatter for it, too. Mm-hmm. Wasn't afraid to take the shirt off with uh, looking flabby Denzel. I don't the know ass, if you've seen that before. His ass was on Showed screen. his ass yeah. off. I, I was, when I watched it this time, I thought about uh, leaving Las Vegas because I thought about like mm. a, a movie just where somebody says, hey, I'm going to fucking go somewhere and just drink myself to death. And I don't care what anybody says. Doesn't matter how much you love me. You can't love me out of my fate. You can't drag me out of my fate. No matter how hard it is on me or hard it is for you to watch, I'm just going to drink until I fucking die. And this guy was a dude who seemed to be stopping just short of that, but he almost wanted to do that, right? He wanted to be for somebody to just leave him alone and let him kill himself. Yeah, when he when yeah. he, any time there's a movie scene where somebody takes the giant swig of the of the vodka bottle or the tequila bottle, you know, it's like just kill me. Almost if he hadn't saved all of those lives, he would have been content to just. Fucking have OD one day or something like that. But like people are trying to the the whole trial and the whole movie is about him kind of trying to come to terms with his humanity and the fact that he actually matters in the world. You were saying that the movies were sort of interchanged a lot around the time when this was released. So what is this? This is twelve. End of 2012. Yeah. yeah. When you think about all the other, not only his contemporaries, but also all the movie stars that have come since Denzel. 
it's pretty hard to think of a single one that would have done this role, with the exception of maybe DiCaprio. Yeah, I was going to say Leo. Other than that, or you'd have to have the way to the because, stardom, Because too. being a movie star has become almost more about what happens off screen than it is on screen. You know, it's like, there are really good actors, but for the most part, being a movie star is like, look at Ryan Reynolds. Like, he has like 100 companies. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's become like a, a, just another part of a portfolio that you have to be to be a famous person and to be a, a business person. And for Denzel, it's always really been about the acting, more or less. And he makes the movies he wants to make. If, even if he makes blockbusters like Magnificent Seven or Equalizer, those are the movies he wants to make. But you don't find, like, Brad Pitt might try this one. He plays bad guys, but they aren't, like, bad guys. You know, Hanks wouldn't do this. Hanks wouldn't go to Cruz this. wouldn't do this. It would be and so nobody younger, did, I, yeah. I can't see anyone younger doing Cruz's this. Cruz's version of this would have been hilarious. It becomes a drama comedy, I think, at that point. It's a little like cocktail. Well, Cruz made a movie about a very famous pilot from Baton Rouge. Yeah. Uh, named Barry Seal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see that one? Um, yeah. American Made. And yeah. if you know I wasn't the a fan. If you know the actual Barry Seal story, there's not a lot that's fucking funny about it. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm saying the fucking judge basically set the guy up to get murdered back home. Um, but the movie kind of had a comedic touch to it. It was it's really about the Iran Contra and all, and all of that stuff. Yeah. So it's different. This one, they go dark. They go super dark in this movie. I think my favorite Denzel, and I, you know, I've said I think he's he's become my favorite actor over the last six years. He was always in the running, but I think just from a rewatchable standpoint, I find myself gravitating to his movies the most. I always like when there's some sort of damage with him is my favorite version of him. And he's played that in a bunch of different ways. Like, even on Man on Fire, mm -hmm. which we already did. Um, damage guy. Like, just trying to... But with you, a good heart. kind of rooting Usually for him. Yeah, they, I, know, I know deep down that he's a good guy. Equalizer is, is looking out for the little guy. Equalizer is another one where yeah. it's like there's some sort of damage that he's hiding, but he's... The forefront of it seems fine, but it's not. It, it's something interesting about Denzel. So when you have a conversation about him now... Because there's a generation of people, and I say this all the time, that remember Denzel basically post training day or like whatever. What he's 21st doing. century Denzel. 21st century Denzel. Remember the Titans on. Right. They don't remember that one time he was the sexiest motherfucker walking around, right? Yeah. He was the best looking guy in the thing. He was a legitimate movie star icon, like good looks. He. Well, that's basically Mo Better Blues. That's part of Mo Better Blues. Mm -hmm. that that's whole, part of the meal ticket of that. Is he's just fucking he's amazingly handsome. Handsome guy. He with the, like, he went away from the movie star type, right? You know how these guys try to preserve themselves for yeah. decades and day. He let himself become older. Yeah. He let the the roles change. Unlike Cruz. Unlike Cruz. Unlike Pitt. Unlike some of these other guys. Which, that's a big part of who they are. I'm not, it's not a diss to them. I'm just saying, yeah. he let himself become an older guy, take different roles, lose the sexy, but pull more other dimensions into how, his performances. Like Belichick right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting older, That would explain but his this new... Patriot season is if Belichick is doing throwing... Cocoa Puffs before the game. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder... Denzel would never answer questions like this, but I wonder where this ranks for him on his favorite movies that he's done. Like, I would assume Malcolm X and Training Day would be, you know, first sentence. Yeah. But then after that, I would, I'd love to know, like, what the next two is. Because he, I had him on the pod once, and he's like a classic, I don't like to look back, I make my movies, I just go on to the next one, I don't think about it. But I would imagine he put about as much of himself and just... in. What you know, it, I always wonder with him, like he's always they always say he's a little bit of a method actor when he plays a role like this. Does how far does he go to try to tap into the guy? Um, it just feels like he put a lot into this one. Cause we've seen other ones, like he did what was the one with Wahlberg? Two guns. Yeah. yeah. I mean he he like, can crank out. Malin Denzel, I still like. Yeah. I'm still in on Malin Denzel, but you know when he's like, All right, I'll be there at nine. That's Get why I'm, I'm really interested ready. to see what he's like in Gladiator Two coming out, I think probably end of 24 or maybe 25. I don't know. They're still shooting it. But because it's like a supporting role, but it is in a, su a supporting role in like what could be an awards blockbuster. Yeah. Mm. And he hasn't really, I'm trying to think of the last time he's kind of just popped up in a movie like that in a supporting role. Usually, unless he's directing it. Not, not, one, not one that big. Not one that's got that much where he just, nah. He never is. Yeah. yeah. He's never like just 
coming off the bench, Andre Iguodala, 2017 And I don't know what, like, role he's playing, like, but, like, it's... He's Hannibal in it. Hannibal? Yeah. Well, there's one other big piece we have to talk about this movie. It's probably the best plane crash So, that ever. was the other thing. I was going to ask you guys. We... I wrote down my list, so if we want to do this, we can do it now. Well, I, it was more than just plane crashes. I was talking about set pieces and spectacles and movies, mm -hmm. because I think that, to the earlier point about movies changing over the last 15 years, is... They put a lot of money into the uh, CGI and the animated effects and the visual effects that they do in a lot of blockbusters. Now you guys talk about them all the time on mm -hmm. Midnight Boys. There is something about this that's almost the last of its kind. Where, I mean, obviously it's all d effects based anyway. It doesn't seem like it. But it, it does like not a, seem like it's it. It's a how did it, they it, do that? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem like it. I'm looking for the cartoon part of it when I'm watching it this time. Even down it, to the rear projection of like what's going on outside of the, the window. Mm-hmm. And, and when the he's, people scrambling, and when, when he's like, coming? when he inverts it, and you can see, like, it's it's like no perfect. So they didn't invert an actual plane to get the shot where the guys coming out of the hotel. The and, and I he, do not think so. Of no, course, okay, no. obviously, <laughs> people are gonna be like, "That's a stupid question, Van." But that, but that fucking looks ridiculously yeah. real. It looks practical to me. And I know they didn't really invert. Actually, I, I didn't know. But like when I when I watched it, there was not any. It was like Nolan stuff. Yes. Yeah, it, that's exactly it. It's yeah. like there's like, it's like when you see the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. It's when you see uh, the the truck chase in Dark Knight. Like there are a couple of things where you're just like, oh, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Bullet time in mm -hmm. Matrix or whatever. Like this is this plane crash. I've watched on YouTube just to be like, I just want to see like what ha ha like the order of operations or the cuts or like the different things that he does because it sticks with you for the rest of your life after you see it once. It's so cool when. They shut the engine and he's gliding and yeah. they're heading toward the church. And that like 12 seconds, the filmmaking is just so fucking good in that. Yeah. Um, I have my top four. Flight, Castaway, Alive, and Fearless. Yes, that that's And that's then it. Sully and the Gray and the Edge are my honorable mentions. A lot the of those one. are one of the cool things about this, with the exception. I mean, Sully obviously is different. A lot of those are from passenger perspectives. That's the thing. So you're sitting in the pa you're sitting in the back, and the audience is being asked to be like, "Oh shit! Like this is all of my fears about a plane going down. Like mm -hmm. this is what it's like. You're sitting in coach. You're you're yeah. elbow to elbow with somebody, and all of a sudden you're gripping the armrest. But this is the pilots, yeah. and it's written entirely in the jargon of of aviation. Like there's not a lot of like explanations as to what they're doing or why they're dumping fuel or why this is happening. And yet it's just as gripping as if you're watching it in a live and you're seeing all the passengers. So, you know, I had aviophobia for a long time. I went about 11 or 12 years where I didn't fly. Like, it's just stunning news. Can't, can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Never would have guessed you might have problems on an airplane. <laughs> I took a train back to Baton Rouge. Oh, you, you and John Madden and Tony Kornheiser. Yep. Three of the hours. Grades. 48 hours. Right? <laughs> like, um, but uh, you would think that this movie would make you more fearful about flying. Oddly, it was one of the things that helped me. Really? Why? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because of, number one, the number of redundancies that they have yeah. on the plane that you don't know, just how badly something has to go. Not going to work yeah. for everyone, but how badly something has to go. I mean, how go. badly where it's one screw that wasn't rusted a couple times and I know, but now we lose but my wing. That that's a, such a major oversight that, yeah. that would have to happen. And then every single time he rose to the occasion to like solve a problem, yeah. his, his expertise in right. what was going on, he knew exactly how to get back. And you know, that plus the real life Sully situation, the pilots are up there and they're super, super skilled. So how do you feel about the 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 other flight from a couple weeks ago where the guy on mushrooms like got into the cockpit? <laughs> it was like you need to bring this plane down. <laughs> <clears throat> I watched that. I also watched Dark Side of the Ring where uh where Kurt Henning and Michael P. F. Hayes were where I, Oh, the no, plane ride from hell? The plane ride from hell where Brock Lesnar and Kurt yeah. Henning were fighting. Yeah. And the woman was like you know, they could actually go through the fuselage of the plane. And I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was I like, didn't know I had to worry I about that. Yeah. yeah. I, had to, like, be, I don't know I have to be considered about falling through the side of yeah, the plane. Yeah, that would suck. Do you, are you, were you, have you ever been scared of flying? No. Um, the only thing that changed for me over the years was after 9-11, I got scared of being in high buildings mm. where I used to love 
shit like that. And then after that, it just like freaked me out for some reason. United 93, which not a rewatchable. I'll but, never watch that bitch. Um, I've never seen it. But that, <laughs> that I, I, I'm so I don't give a fuck what y'all on. I'll never That's look a at that really bitch. well done movie. But yeah. they they yeah. the last part is from the cockpit and it's really harrowing. Why like, did you, you look at that bitch? Like, what, like I had it, saw it in the theater. Yeah, me too. You went, y'all went to the movies. I love, to I see love that movies, movie? yeah. man. Sorry, I never in life will I watch that motherfucker ever. I, I I was upset that they made it. I was like, why would you make this joint? It's very much like a tribute to those people, though. God bless them. It's a really good movie. All right, one of the things I love about Flight: really good cast, not just Denzel, our guy Don Cheadle, Beth from Yellowstone, Kelly Riley. Bruce Greenwood. I love Bruce Greenwood, man. I'm a big Bruce Greenwood. Have you seen Eight Below? Yes. He's awesome. How many times has he played Jack or Bobby Kennedy? I feel like he's been a Kennedy a bunch of times. He was in 13 days. days Eight Below is a mortal lock for Dog Month. You like that? (laughs) Dog Month. (laughs) Dog Month, (laughs) Eight Below is in. It's so good. John Goodman, Melissa Leo, Tamara Tooney. And Nadine Velasquez, who we'll get to later. Um, but from an Oscar standpoint, no Kelly Riley for Best Supporting Actress. No. Mm-hmm. Denzel snuck in there for I Best Actor. I don't think we knew what to do with Kelly Riley yet. This is pre-Beth. You're right. It, it might even be pre True Detective Season 2, which she she's also in. Uh yeah. I think we we were we were we weren't quite sure how to how to read the music yet. Daniel Day Lewis wins for Lincoln. Lincoln. Other he nominees. He won the Oscar as soon as, as soon as he stepped on the set for the movie. Bradley Cooper, Silver Linings Playbook, Hugh Jackman, Les Miserables, Phoenix for the Master, mm. and Denzel for Flight. That's a great, Sh- shockingly great good lineup. category. Yeah. That Phoenix. Fe- if we're Walking relitigating Phoenix that though, are we are we going Daniel Day over uh, over Denzel? This I is think, about as good as Denzel can do as of, an actor. It, it's kind of a coin toss for me. Daniel Day Lewis is pretty incredible, Lincoln. I I couldn't finish it. It, it uh, I guess I should. That movie's ponderous. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you how it ends? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's bad for Lincoln. <laughs> it, it, well, actually, that was bad for me too because we could have got our forty acres if they would have let the guy live. But you know, y'all people weren't gonna let that happen. Um, it, 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 it's like I'm Irish. I don't know what you're looking at me for. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I still think that Joaquin Phoenix in The Master was there's a case the zag brutally brutally good. It's a good like <laughs> when those NBA MVP years were three guys you could make a really good case for. Yeah, it feels like that. That one. was a hard one to watch too. Um, Best Supporting Actress was Anne Hathaway wins for Les Mis. Are you is this is you're, are you really making the Kelly Riley case here? I'm just telling you who was nominated okay. that year. Helen Hunt for The Sessions. I don't even know Sally Field for Lincoln, Amy Adams for The Master. <laughs> Come on, and Jackie Weaver for Silver I Linings wanted, Playbook. I want everybody to hear this. That you that's think another like like Kelly Riley suspect. in Flight should get nominated over Amy Adams in The Master. I don't know if if she should have, but I like Kelly Riley in Flight. Okay, more than I mean, Amy Adams was acting circles around her in in The Master. It's just like a, a much more weighty part. Like, I even think Flight might be better if Amy Adams is playing the... the... Come on, Chris Ryan. <laughs> why, are you, why are you shitting on Kelly Riley? What's going on I here? I like Kelly Riley. Like I'm too. just like, let's just be like... Gee, Beth is one of my favorite all-time television characters. Like, I really love Beth, but like, in this one, she's kind of just, you know, she's there. I mean, she's good, but she's... How many Amy Adams master conversations have you had <laughs> in the last 10 years? <laughs> Just me, me and a guy at a bar. And then uh, Tarantino won Best Original for, for Django Unchained. And Flight was nominated in that category. And Zemeckis did not get nominated. And Zemeckis did not get nominated for Best Director. We had the guy from Amore, guy from Beast of the Southern Wild, Spielberg for Lincoln, O. Russell for Silver Linings Playbook, and then Ang Lee won for Life of Pi. Life of Pi. I so Zemeckis is probably the most enjoyable, uh, underappreciated, from an award standpoint, director we've had in the last 35 years. He's th- done awesome stuff, and the Oscars just don't care. I Well, I would, I would adjust your parameters there because he has spent much of the last two decades and, and all, all the time between Castaway and Flight working on stop motion. Like um, animated stuff. So it's, 
it's really, it's a strange one. It's almost like what would have happened if, if Avatar flopped. And it was like, oh, so James Cameron's going to just go off and make these, like, different kinds of, like, te- these technological kind of, like, movies and not just give us a live-action genre movie that mm. we are dying for. And it's kind of what happened with Zemeckis because he's, he's one of the biggest directors coming out of the 80s, right? I mean, we were, I was at my friend Simon's yesterday and we were talking about it. And he is a, a high, high-caliber goat. Like he, he, he like, is. He's not mentioned. Not not at all. In but any of the combos. Right. Take your pick of goddamn movies. I'll give you some. Back to the Future. Starts Forrest with Gump. Used Cars in 80, Romancing the Stone, All Three Back to the Futures, Roger Rabbit, Death Becomes Her, Forrest Gump. Is yeah. that the only one he got nominated for? What Lies Beneath, Cast Away. You skipped Contact. Contact yeah. is Skip Contact great. for a reason. You don't fuck with Contact? <laughs> no. You'd rather watch United 93 than Contact. I didn't say repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made a bunch of other Honey, ones. Yeah. Uh, you have two choices. United 93 or Contact <laughs> Con- tonight, and it can't be Contact. <laughs> United 93 it is. Just electric sexual tension with McConaughey and Jody. They're not supposed great. to have sexual tension. Eh, whatever. That movie sucked. <laughs> come on. Oh, you, come on. Oh, that- Contact. That's a w- see it once movie. Contact is really like contact? Times. contact is fucking great. You guys are nuts. You just like weird <laughs> UFO shit. Of course you like. You like the unknown. I did not like that movie. You like the, you unknown. Like the unknown. Do I need to see it again? Because I like vehemently I did not again. like it the first time I saw it. I think it. it's not dissimilar to this in the sense that it's a pretty brave movie. You know, it's a pretty he's really good. Brave. Yeah, by because he's really good at the bait and switch. He he brings you in. This movie, it's a plane crash. In Contact, it's about like the search for extraterrestrial life. But then the questions it asks after the the switch mm-hmm. are much more interesting. It's like, how can you be forgiven in flight? Or like, what is it that you're looking for? What are we looking for in in life in Contact? Yeah, why are we why are we reaching out yeah. to the stars? Like, what I was smoking a lot of pot in '97. Maybe it just didn't hit me. It should have hit you. It should have hit you even more. <laughs> just didn't like it. It's probably that Boston dirt weed. You needed you needed the banana you boat. Think, you think you're better <laughs> than me? <laughs> the cocoa puff. He's it, Bill. Bill, let's, let's okay. Let's do this. Let's get Bill a cocoa puff, and then we'll watch. Contact. Banana boat. <laughs> Here come big dog. Bill would do like sixty four thunder fake trades <laughs> in two minutes. <laughs> SGA for here's how we get Kawhi Leonard on the thunder. <laughs> uh, Flight was the last kind of important movie Zemeckis made, and he's made a few since, but this was the last one that really hit. But he had an unbelievable run. It was like thirty. 30 plus years. Um, nominated for Best Actor, Denzel, Best Original Screenplay, and that was it for the Oscar noms. $31 million budget made $161.8 million. Got us a hit. Zemeckis and Denzel did not take a lot of money to make this. Roger Ebert, four stars. In his top five of the year? He said it was uh, one of the most terrifying flight scenes I've ever witnessed. Called the movie Nearly Flawless. Said the performance by Denzel was brave and one of his very best. Not often does a movie character make such a harrowing personal journey that keeps us in deep sympathy all the way. I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I always felt bad for Denzel, even as he was acting horribly for his character, which is a tough one to pull off. Well, they start with him. It the movie is this really intoxicating, pun intended mix of lows and highs. Yeah. Like, you see this guy, and you're like, this guy's a fucking basket case, even though he's doing well in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you like, this guy Even is, though romantically, like, even though there's a lot to There's envy. ways yeah. that he is killing it. Um, <laughs> and then he gets on the plane, and you're like, this is the baddest motherfucker that's ever fucking lived. He's like... And then there's just these other scenes where his humanity is... The scene with his son, just crazy and you get to a point to where you're like okay well he's a piece of shit again and then just when you think you're there with him he does the the honorable moral thing uh in remembering the maybe the hottest woman <laughs> ever and, and, and so he, did contact have highs and lows like this or no you know i get why you don't like contact because you're very you got to get outside of yourself bill you got to get in with the the, the ethereal the Intergalactic. You want questions. mystical Bill in 2024? I want mystical Bill yeah. in 2024. Okay. Yeah. I want to see, I wanna see it. I'll go bro. back to the drawing board. I'm gonna buy you some tie dye, oh, and we can come in okay. here. I want to see you. We'll fuck around with it. Most rewatchable scene. Where do you want to start, Van? Uh, opening scene. Okay, 
I would like to say hello to Kalika Abrams, who is the woman I am with, and just know that we almost didn't have a situation because there was an audible gasp when the movie started. The movie starts, and we we in the Cinerama Dome. Wait, you were you were like two minutes late today, and I was like, I wonder. If <laughs> I wonder if Van made it out of his house today. Right, it, like, the, the movie starts, and I was like, shit. <laughs> and then you're on your phone, like, trying to see what else she's been in. Like, what, like, kind of, did she do, like, a Cinemax situation earlier in her career? Uh -huh. so, can I see more of this? She's from My Name is Earl. Fucking amazing. The movie just wallops you. And that opening scene for her. Yeah, I'm. I'm we're all trying to be a little diplomatic here. But I don't it's, wanna. It's one of the... It's one of the holy shit nude scenes, I think. Hey, listen, of I'm the sure there were some century. male versions of it too, but um, this Why was are you like, doing this? Well, hold on. I'm just trying to it, tiptoe. It, 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 don't, don't tiptoe. I'm just being careful. The fucking woman looks amazing. And by the way, everyone knows it. Okay, <laughs> everyone good. watching this, uh, listening to this, knows that why are we acting like she didn't look amazing? Well, we got to talk she about Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt and Fight Club just to, to even it out. No, looked, I don't need to do that. Okay, good. Give it, up, give it up, Bill. In the theater, it couldn't have been more quiet for like two minutes. <laughs> Everyone was just kind of like... <laughs> it was like Tiger Woods staring down an 11-foot putt to win the Masters. <laughs> for two minutes. And then, as if, if we, it's not enough, like she, a... she does the bend over. Yeah. And Denzel's on the phone, and you can kind of see him like side-eyeing her like, holy shit. And she's like, oh my God, I've never seen this in a movie before. Uh, unbelievable it job was, by her. It's like a real like... Zemeckis used to make movies in the 80s where they would just be like, this this lady's got her shirt off. Yeah. This whole scene mm -hmm. for no reason. And we used to do that in this country. We used country. to be a country yeah. that really cared about certain aspects. Really peaked in the 80s. I think she's wonderful. Are. She's yeah. great. She's great. And then, you know, ends up becoming a major part of the movie later. But I'm not going to lie. Of all the ones that are burned into my memory, this is one of them. Because so... Latino Hall of Fame for you. Latino <laughs> Girl Hall of Fame. Way up there. Way, way up there. She's like the Babe Ruth. She's she's up there. She's a founding member. Like, because, you know, there's there's been a lot. You know, Salma Hayek. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Dust Till Dawn. Then she comes back and runs it back in dogma. Salma. If Van hears somebody say the word poppy, he, <laughs> it's dead, he loses it. <laughs> That's for everyone. Why y'all got to act like it's only me? Y'all know y'all can't fucking handle that. Y'all know y'all can't handle the, when they when the Spanish starts to come. So Salma Hayek, Salma Hayek. We can do this later. Oh, uh, we can do this later. Yeah. yeah. Um, Denzel snorting coke right into feeling all right and doing the. Yeah, the, I was gonna say the Scorsese that, head pullback. Well, I'll save this for for probably unanswerable questions. But his breakfast is Miller High Life weed, cigarettes, and cocaine. Old Miller High Life. Would too, you throw which, it in like a breakfast bar? Or? Well, I think that I would have gotten an ice cold Miller High Life to be completely honest. Because yeah. like for as much as I enjoy their their product, it it decreases in drinkability as it gets warmer. One thing this I don't know if this wins great shot Gordo because there's so many good things in there, but I love how it's just one one camera from far away just kind of capturing watching the life happening just, and she kind of walks out of frame and she comes back in it's such a great really good. barometer of how chaotic his life is yeah unbelievably hot woman drugs and alcohol everywhere and then he's on the phone with his with his uh, ex-wife about his son I mean the first 25 minutes is completely rewatchable but we'll just go to the plane crash part I guess you could go when he's searching for the sliver of sun it's well, like, that's when he's on. taking off. And that, yeah. Right, that co-pilot. That part's really fun, but going to the plane crash, one of the, I'm going to say it's, what, seven minutes? It's nine minutes long. I nine think. minutes? Just absolutely harrowing. From when, from when Ken is like, okay, I'm going to like do this, and the, something breaks in the plane, to when they, they land. We're going like, to die. The guy's like, we're going to dive. We're going to die. There's nothing but houses. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and that guy's freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. And he is... Cooler than a fucking He's cube of great. ice. Say I love you, Trevor. Oh my god! Dude. Even that. Think Say about right it. in the black box. That's the only piece of dialogue I think in that entire thing that isn't about flying. Mm -hmm. Like the, the all the rest of the dialogue is like dump this, do this, pitch that way, and then he's like, "What's your son's name?" Mm -hmm. And she's like, Trevor. And she's like, "Say I love you, Trevor," into the black box. But what struck me about that was that he asked her to come out there to help him. Yeah. Right. So he asked her to come out there and help him. We got to do the thing so I can get manual control or whatever it is. While you're here, though, know that we might not make it out of this. The wherewithal, This is the last time your son's going to hear your voice. The wherewithal yeah. to say, hey, tell your son you love him. He's yeah. just thinking about everything while he's up there. 
We lost all power. <laughs> <laughs> um, poor Cammy, the stewardess, getting just fl- she dies trying to help a kid, and then every time the plane flips, she's flying around, just getting yeah. fucked around. Terror. Yeah, <laughs> just really rough. Um, you like cross? That. You laughed. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> it's so like, like, like Bill. Bill like, it's just you like that. You, you it's, so, it's so awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so awful. Like, like, oh my but god, it's kind of funny, right? But we never even get like. <laughs> Look at him. He's like <laughs> We never get like any cami time. <laughs> Look, she's getting thrown around a plane and Bill is at well, the house. It's almost like an SNL sketch where you, it's like they put a mannequin, like when they make the airplane movies, and it's like the mannequin <laughs> stewardess is just flying up and down. Right. Um the cross of the church getting clipped. Symbolism. Um <laughs> brace for impact. They crash right before the uh baptism mm-hmm. water. Symbolism. Um and the the crash itself just really I don't know. Wait, it's about as good as you're going to do with those. It's it's impossible to cut, like to top it in the movie. Like it's yeah, just that's it's, how we have. It, it's fantastic. You've seen fearless, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like Denzel waking up with the bloodshot eyes and talking Love to Bruce it. Greenwood, and finding out they lost too, and then he cries and it's like it's blood, blood red. Yeah, it, he wakes up and there's silence because he's so fucked up. He's still concussed. Yeah, yeah he's still concussed, and it's just so crazy coming from the last scene that you saw to see that now there's no chaos except he's wearing all the chaos on his body. Yeah. He, he can hardly move. He can hardly talk. Like, the whole nine is like a really great scene to button up the crash. And he's watching it on TV. I like, uh, I mentioned how I like the gaunt man, gaunt cancer guy, the cigarette. The meeting in the stairwell, yeah. Yeah, there's just some, I think this is probably in the running for best quote if not the best quote of the movie, as soon as you realize that the random events in your life are God, you will live a much better life. You spend your life believing that you have all the control over what happens. Bullshit. I think that's the point of the movie. I make mean, a case that's... I think that there's there's an element about like... Because that's actually like... I mean, I, I'll be completely honest. Like when I fly, I'm like... One of the reasons why I don't get scared of flying is like I'm, it's really not in my hands. If it's meant like, to be, it's meant to be. Well, it's also just like this is just crazy that we can do this. That we can fly from Los Angeles to New York in five hours. And it used to take weeks and, and months or however long it used to take. If you were going by like carriage mm-hmm. or train. And now we're like, yep, yeah, here I am for lunch. And I'm just kind of like, I'm like... The sacrifice for that miracle mm. is a little risk. A little risk. Yeah. Yeah. James, what's James? Badge Dale. Dale. James Badge Dale, aka Departed Guy. That's my guy. Not set up quite enough in the Departed for the shocking ending reveal that he was. Yes. Pop the murderer. Him in, Needed one more out. scene with him where he yeah. got coffee with somebody. But um, Cheeto telling Whip about the blood reports. Yeah. It's I psychology. like when Denzel becomes a rational confidence, Denzel. No one could have landed well, that plane actually, like I did. But that's interesting because it's like, that's the first time we've really seen him in a normal circumstance outside of the hospital or a, on the plane. And that's the first time you're like, this guy's a dick. This guy's not taking any, like, yeah. this guy's kind of like, what are we going to do to get me out of this? Who's writing me a check? You know, like. Yeah, he he feels his self-righteousness is so overwhelming that he can't even contemplate, like, the trouble he's in. Yeah. And Don Cheadle, in that moment, understands it. And he's trying to say, hey, stop bullshitting me. You can't bullshit me. I know you were high. And I'm on your side. Yes. And I'm trying to help you. So why don't you stop being an asshole? And Cheeto kind of like throws cold water, not over, not just over Denzel, but over the audience too in the Mm -hmm. movie. Like this guy's really fucked up. The funeral we talked about. It's a lie, Whip. That actress, what actress? Uh, Tamara Tooney. She's in SVU and in Devil's Advocate. Yeah. We talked about it. Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Much older, like 15 years older at this point. It took me a second to realize that was the same actress, but she's really good in this movie. Whip seeing the other pilot in the hospital, I really enjoy. Ken, that's a great scene. That's Brian Garrity. He's he's a really cool, cool actor. That's That's a really good scene. I like the wife. Praise Jesus! Praise Jesus. They're just, they're so moral. Yeah. But they're still a part of him. Yeah. That just knows you're the baddest motherfucker. You know what scares the shit out of me too is uh, Whip's injuries where they're like, you're doing great. And it's like, but here's all the things you did. You tore the tendons in your left wrist and like this. And like when you see Ken and he's like, my pelvis and my leg are shattered. And those guys are like the guys who got out of the flight doing well. Yeah. Like that's just terrifying. Cheeto, when he does the I'm trying to save your fucking life thing. What life? Good Don Cheeto in this movie. 
You're talking about when the when the plane is re. Form. Yeah, 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 it's like that. I love, and he's been doing, and he's been doing, uh, sc- drinking a screwdriver in his car. So imagine, like, he's walking in. Buzzed, and Cheadle knows, and Cheadle can see it the second he sees him, and he's mm-hmm. just like, "We're we're doing all this to like save your ass." And it's like the plane behind them is put back together, but not really. Yes, which is kind of symbolic of everything that's going on. They they're all together. Like he's fine. They, he's got the toxicology report thrown out, but. Like, Whip is, like, Whip is still broken. He's still in sections. He's not, like, whole. Cheeto tries to sell him some hi-fi stereo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Denzel finds the second hotel room. Oh, shit. This is up there with the best 10 minutes of any movie of the 2010s. Yeah. I'll watch this every time it's on. I could be upside down and I'd watch this. As soon as he's you in could the be room, inverted. Killing, yeah. killing time at 2 in the morning. <laughs> and it's like, what's that noise? Oh, that door. Yeah. What's And you're just like, no, no, don't, no. I've seen this movie. I'm like, no, don't go in there. Don't do it. It's it's a classic. I know what you're going to do and I still don't want you to do it. It's watching and a car crash in. happen. Yeah. I was yeah. watching with my wife who had somehow never seen this movie and he opens the hotel bar and she, and she was like, come on! There's never been that many liquor bottles I, in a it, hotel it, bar ever. It almost ever. seems like a hallucination because it's like, yeah. where where did they put all of the liquor in the whole hotel in this little fridge? My mom, I watched it with my mom. My mom was like, that ain't nothing but the devil. <laughs> That's Satan right there. Oof. Trying to mess with this good man. That whole stretch and then they, hey, they, how's so he you, doing? Yeah, so, I didn't hear a peep last night. <laughs> so wait, so you had never watched this movie with Carrie? No, I soloed it when I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Interesting. Does she not um, does she get scared of flying? That's usually um, people's like resistance to this did, movie. Didn't get scared. Okay. No. Um Cheetle and Bruce Greenwood show in, show up. <laughs> That's a great scene. When they when when they come into the room, Is this every, is this the banana boat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well that, then that, we late yeah. I I'm going Denzel finding the second hotel room. Two Cheeto and Greenwood discovering him. Two John Goodman. I think it's all one scene. One, all one. It's my vote, and I think it's the silver. It's somehow better than the plane crash, which is the greatest plane crash scene ever. Yeah. Um, Goodman coming in. I forgot to put in Goodman the first time he shows up. I guess that that could also when he brings the cigarettes and the stroke mags. Yeah, and the stroke mags. You just sit there, ass eat magazine. You just like you just pull on that thing. Oh, that's what you do. Yeah, stroke. Just stroke it. Got you some stroke mags, big dog. And then CR, <laughs> just uh, you take this one. Just the Har- banana boat, Harling Mays. Yeah, I in. mean, I think that <laughs> the idea is that this dude, I think, is a barfly friend of his, like his little connect, his little like guy. He he bangs around Atlanta with and, and gets into trouble. And Goodman comes in, and he and it's a one hundred and one mile per hour fastball at your face, like the entire scene. And it's so awesome that he does it, and then he's like, "And I'm out. I'm out. Yeah." I'm done. I'm Dick Nixon. I'm walking out the door. This is it. <laughs> he needs a one hundred dollar bill. <laughs> yeah. I got a twenty. Got yeah, that'll, do. Do. that'll do. Yeah, like he's sitting there and he's just dominating them. They are arrested. Yeah, in the fact that he's such an expert on drugs and all of this shit. It's just such an amazing idea too that we have to level this guy out. Mm-hmm. So we need to get the banana man. And it happens yeah. instantaneous. Yeah, I'm back, baby. He's yeah. back. He goes over there. He's gonna need, and then he starts prescribing shit. He's gonna need a little cocaine later. All right, so give him this. Boom, boom, boom. And he's out of it. Perfect. Take a little tobacco out of the top of the cigarette. The cocoa puff. puff, yeah. The cocoa puff, baby. So how do you become the banana man, you think, so? <laughs> <laughs> What's the story behind that? I think that? it's one of those things you could take a class from University of Phoenix online. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get certified in banana, banana, man, banana services. They got an ICT tech. That, all the stuff he's saying as I he's giving an, Denzel the an drugs. I used to an guy, but now I'm more of a banana <laughs> man. <laughs> The hours are, are better. But right, remember, he's complaining about the drugs that the hospital is giving him at first. Right. This is generic this, this is generic that. Yeah. We need the pure blue ribbon gold medal shit. Right. The uh, the narration as he's giving Denzel the drugs fucking kills me. I know. It's so good. Well, Harling's going to come up later in a different part of the, the category, but uh, the testimony. Because I drank the vodka. That's become like a huge meme too. People, so the addiction community is all in on this movie. I think more like, so they than think the, it's the really pilot good. community. Yeah, pilot community not as <laughs> not as not as, not as up there. Most people seem to think that this is the 
one of the best movies ever about addiction and the battles you fight and that they all point to the um the second hotel room as like the quintessential oh my god this is your worst fear if you're an addict like opening that and seeing that and that that moment you have where you have to like fight your demons. Yeah. Which is what CR fights anytime somebody's like, hey, you want to go outside and have a Marlboro Red yeah. with me at a <laughs> bar at 1230 Reds. at night? No, Camelite. CR, wow. same thing. Camelite. <laughs> Twi- when we're on the rewatchables tour and yeah. we're at some bar and, some and guys somebody's like, like hey, the, CR, want to go have a steak outside one? in the yeah. back? <laughs> CR's like, oh man, oh it'll be like the hotel room. Um, the That's testimony. what I see in my mini fridge is just cartons of Camelite. <laughs> <laughs> different, different brands. His hand comes in, just grabs them. Yeah, Melissa Leo in the uh, testimony scene. What a great like. Also, Pretty good Melissa Leo just her. like likes being in Denzel Washington movies. Yeah. She was in the Equalizer. Yeah, are, are they friends or something? Because yeah. she showed up. She because she shows up. Kind of, it's almost like in the same role, like a real pivotal one two scene thing, and then pops back yeah. out. Yeah, it's funny Denzel. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of runbacks with Denzel with mm-hmm. people in the uh, universe. Then the speech in jail, I think, is really good. Uh, for a rewatchable scene, That's I would go with uh, that whole stretch. Okay, I'm going to go crash, but okay. gotta what do you go got? crash. Okay. Gotta go crash. What's no, this? wrong. I go opening. I got I to be real to myself. <laughs> okay. Because it's, it's literally the most rewatchable scene. I don't care what you got. It's literally, you guys have so much shame. We have to de I don't have shame. I'm not just, I'm you, agreeing you have, with you. You guys have so much shame. If you had to rewatch one scene <laughs> in the movie, you can't tell me that wouldn't be the one. Craig, step in here. Did I start flight five minutes into the movie for, for me and my wife? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Nothing. No, Ooh. no, he's good. No, it's good. Just to open and credits. This guy drinks a little bit, by the way. <laughs> I, I was watching this movie on my laptop with my entire wife's family, like, in the same room as me, but not looking at the screen. But people were kind of walking behind me. As soon as that scene started and I knew what was up, I, was, I paused it, went right upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet you did. Getting it. <laughs> I, I'm trying to decide what's... <laughs> What's more challenging, watching the Nadine Velasquez scene with your wife's family or watching the plane crash scene on an airplane? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Why? Can you imagine if you were sitting next to a dude on the plane and he just t- started to flight? <laughs> hey, hey, I look, hey, I mean, cut that shit off, dog. Like, like, like hey, bro, turn, like, like, cut that shit off, player. That's, a, that's a hilarious like sidebar combo is worst movies to watch next to somebody on a plane yeah. that would horrify the most it would be like this and salt burn <laughs> 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 hey man what, what's up with that bathtub <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> this guy's just thirsty <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. My mom, uh, my mom announced over the holidays that Saul Perm was her movie of the year. I can't. She loved Jeez. it. I, yeah, I, she loved I am it. not joking when I I think Saul Perm would make a good rewatchable. Mm. It would make a fun one. Yeah, that's a. Would weird your mom do the Saul Perm rewatchables? I asked her to come on the pod and talk about Saul Perm, and she was like, "I don't. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go on your podcast. It's just that whole thing. Mm. I'm not like your father. I don't need to go on your podcast." <laughs> What stage is the best? First 30 minutes we mentioned. Mm-hmm. How about pounding air from an oxygen mask when you're hungover? That's mm. so sick. Definitely aged mm. well. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like, I don't know if that was as known in 12 as it is now. That was a, a little piece of science that we don't get. Now he'd day. have the IV. Yeah. Right. Combo. The concierge the guys. Sometimes. What do you have for what stage is the best? Smoke, I have a bunch. Smoking Denzel. Just one of our great movie smokers. You know, oh yeah, just the the kind of like Mount Smokemore. Yeah, <laughs> Mount Smokemore. De Niro, Denzel. <laughs> Leota, bro, he, <laughs> Leota. Is, he is a forceful smoker. And Mickey, Mickey Rourke, yeah, Michael Corleone, yeah. Mm-hmm. just banging him out. Mickey Rourke's a good one, yeah. But Denzel, I love like who's the one in Copland we loved? Edie Falco. Edie Falco. <laughs> oh, she yeah. Smokes, she, yeah. yeah, I got Kelly uh, Kelly Riley. She she aged the best. Yeah, she's got better. The and the best. and the Kelly Riley like femme fatale thing is obviously mm-hmm. so you shat on her Oscar nomination. Right. I'm glad you have circled back. Um. You have any what stage the best? Because I have a few more. No, that's it. The sure. staging of the plane crash, like I said before, is just like one of the last great, uh, amazing, like seemingly practical, like special, like special effects set pieces. Honestly, this movie was also a part of the two thousands uh, cocaine renaissance. Mm. Cocaine came back hardcore in the two thousands, in the two thousand tens, two thousand tens, two thousand tens. Yeah. Like, what's another example? I have some knowledge from my previous workplace. So I can't really talk about it. Oh, you just mean like cocaine in general? Period. People as a recreational it. drug. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Of course, yeah. 
I like when they come up with fake airline names that actually sound like fake like airlines. Southeast? Is that no, what it was? South Jet Airlines. South so I'm like, Jet. Hey, and totally do you guys think what are you flying? I'm flying South it's Jet. It's kind of like not the best airline. Yeah, it seems like a like a spirit airlines for the South. And that's an important context. Where you could have drunk pilots yeah. and drunk flight attendants. That's the thing. That's an important context clue for Whip because he was a badass pilot in the Navy. And then before he was flying with that guy, they were flying for Delta. So there's something that's hampered his upward mobility to yes. be like on one of the big airlines. And he's doing like 45 minute, minute flights from Orlando yeah. to Yeah, when he's Atlanta. been doing it that long. Yeah. So. What's age the best? Calling bodies souls on airplanes? I yeah. kind of like. Mm. Appropriately creepy. Is that is that what they're supposed to do? I think that's like a ship's thing. Like, like yeah. a, it goes mm. even back to like boats. It feels stuff. like it's supposed to like scare you into doing your job where you constantly refer to everybody as a soul. Mm. Stroke mags, what's age the best? It's funny to hear that. <laughs> that's what that's what that's age the worst. Yeah, I think stroke <laughs> mags have kind of been phased well, out. Stroke well, mags have what... also aged the worst, but just the, the oh. phrase stroke mags. Those might be the last three stroke mags in, in, in Got my stroke mags for you, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes on and lists all of them. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's bad ass eaters or it's, something. It's like <laughs> ass masters. Like ass or something. ass yeah. masters. Yeah. But so so you just put that, you made that title up. It's very telling. But you think I'm Whitlock? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, my search I didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know about his search history. He's fine. Uh, uh, see our Sweet Jane as heroin background music? Can Pretty I, solid. Can I touch? Would you go the Mazzy me? Star over Sweet Jane? Do you what want me to? Do? I was going to save this for Kid Cudi. I was also going to save this for What's Age the Worst. I think this has the most generic soundtrack. Oh, all I had that later. Yeah. Yeah, try harder, Zemeckis. It's like... I know that the Forrest Gump Save soundtrack this. is I iconic. All, all right. Save it. All right. Um, the trailer for this movie is really good, even though it uses that Stone song that half the trailers use. Last one, what's age the best? Kelly Riley, the character goes to, she needs to get some drugs and she goes to the porn set. I have so much about this. I do too. The movie is called The Beast with Two Backs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the, it's, a, it's a remake. It's they're a remake. It back. They, they, they're he revisiting. says, we're putting the narrative back into porn. Yeah. Right. That was a quote. And then he says, the scene is, the moor comes in, finds you in bed with one of your nurses. Mm -hmm. This is a whole separate movie that I'm in on. Right. The Beast with Two Backs. Like a, like the making of The Beast with Two Backs feels like a Nathan this is gonna be my movie. This is going to be my hottest take. Okay. The Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop. So we have Under the Bridge. <laughs> yes. During the Kelly Riley relapse. That's... Sympathy for the Devil for the Goodman appearance. Give me shelter for Denzel leaving the hospital. And then Sympathy for Devil again for Goodman's save. And then we also have the heroine. And feeling all right. Feeling, feeling all right. All right. Yeah. I, CR, go do it. Well, I th didn't think that uh, Killing Them Softly could be topped for when those guys are doing heroin and the Velvet Underground song Heroin is playing. Mm. But it, it was topped by Under the Bridge and Sweet Jane Very by the, the Cowboy Junkies. It's just too on the nose. It's like it's there's too easy. so much good music out there. Or like just, Zemeckis, find one friend who's got like a really cool playlist. Forrest I do Gump like had the same issue. issue. I, I do like Forrest Gump, though. I feel like it's But when it came though. out, like nobody, I don't, right. I feel like. It was like, oh, Bob Seger, Jackson Brown. Yeah. But, but, it, but I feel like it was narratively that all made sense with Forrest Gump. Like, I get it. It was just the easiest possible choices for yeah. each year. Like Jenny's about to, you know, Freebird is playing. She's about to jump off the thing. I feel like it, it worked. And I was at the point where that that soundtrack turned me on to a lot of that music during, at the age I was at. The Big Kahuna Burger Award for Best Use of Food and Drink. Um, the Self <laughs> Screwdrivers right. yeah. on the Plane. Oh, I love that. Pouring out a Is tiny... Is there any food in this movie? A tiny bit, no. Just pouring out a tiny bit of the orange juice and throwing the vodka in. I enjoyed that. I have that. the uh, airplane bottles of vodka before the crash. Yeah. The gallon of vodka that he That's gets. That's great. Yeah. That's one of the all-timers. And the winner is the mini bar. The mini bar. Oh, the mini bar is good. And him yeah, housing right. all the beers when he was when she comes back and she finds them. Yeah. Den of Thieves, Benny Hanna Award for scene stealing location and great shot order award for most cinematic shot. It's gotta be the slow motion approaching the church, right? Yeah. Going Oh, I thought you guys were gonna say whips fuck pad. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. okay, we can do that too. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you a question? Slow motion approaching the church is one of them. But also the inverted plane over itself, the hotel, over the hotel yeah. is a oh, fucking the guy's seen incredible it. shot. That's I also I like the shot yeah. when he puts the bottle on top of the fridge. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and it stays there for a while, and then he grabs it, swipes it. Yeah, the Vincent Chase Award. Are we sure this character was actually good at his job? Is it Whip? Yeah, is it I had the co-pilot. 
coming. Oh, he's he gonna find out. We're going down. He never forgets his like what to do though. He's just freaking out. Yeah. He he always you're, is like, oh, okay, man. Like I'll, I'll get do your shit the together. Flaps. Yeah. I have Bruce Greenwood. Who the, the I, union rep for the, the airline? It just didn't seem like he had very much control over what the fuck was going yeah, on. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, I like that. What stage the worst? I already CR mentioned Zemeckis goes chalk with a lot of the music. There's a so I would say for a what stage the worst? There's a two hour forty five minute version of this movie, and there's a one hour forty minute version you want of the this movie. One? And this movie's kind of in the middle. And I am not sure. I had this in the um in the the what's her oh the butch's girlfriend for a weak link of the movie. I really like Kelly Riley in this movie. I I feel like they're missing a scene or they didn't nail the scene or literally land the plane, no pun intended, on an awesome scene with them on a porch where they had these moments where I'm like, man, I wish these two great actors I just wish they one of these scenes was better and more memorable because so, it's not I, I think what you're getting at is that second act where it feels like it's just like this kind of roller coaster of him being like I'm o- I'm gonna be okay you've made me feel okay and then he falls off the wagon and then like this kind of back and well, forth because they doing. spend a lot of time building that Kelly Riley character up where it's we, we have all this backstory with her and she's got a drug issue we, we're off with her and it feels like it's about the two people she has no influence on him but I don't think, I think but, that's the point. I think the point though. is is that like there are there like that the, the there isn't actually like a white knight coming to save you that makes you see like the error of your ways and the value of life. Like you have to find but that she, out. It yourself. seems like he affected her though. Well, so what happened in my opinion is that she saw as bad as it can get. She wanted no parts of it. But for him, she's, she's like, This is how I wind up in the beast with two backs. In the beast with two backs, right? For <laughs> the him, beast with three backs. It would be the <laughs> sequel. For him, she is essentially no different. Three, the beast got another back. <laughs> yeah, but like it's like a third back for for him. Beast she's, got back. She's just like another be- beast got back. <laughs> she's just another beer. He's just using her to self soothe. Yeah. yeah, like she's just like another upper downer or whatever. And when she and realizes that that it's just another thing that he's using to kind of and he'll abuse her just like he abuses the alcohol and the drugs. She goes, okay, I got to leave. Yeah. And I think there's also there's something I'm down about with all those that. Scenes I just want an like, awesome scene with with them. I got you. And it's I really missing. enjoyed the scene. Where he finally shows the depths of his depravity to her. When he Yeah, yeah, that's good. Where he's still around, he goes, you know, I, I never had to suck dick. And she goes, I never because she th- her character still has some dignity. Right. And she finds that dignity. She wouldn't do two thousand for the anal. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about it. Um next one is the uh oh, that was my butch's girlfriend. Did you guys have Butch's girlfriend or no? You have a weak link? Um, not really. Okay. Not nah, really. And then, um, was there a better title for this movie? I'm going to say no. Oh, I is, got one. This is your pilot speaking? Oh, that's good. Oh. Mm-hmm. What do you have? Soul Plane 2. <laughs> turned upside down. <laughs> Soul Plane 2 inverted? Soul Plane 2 inverted. <laughs> uh, the Mallet Ribbon Award. Did this movie need a better sex scene? Can't. I don't know if it could. I think we're good. I got a better title. Act of God. Yeah, that's good. Really good. Oh. That's good, Craig. Look at Craig. Good job, Craig. Yeah. Look at you coming into 24 all guns blazing, man. Right. Good job. Would you have for what's age the worst? Man, interracial. Dr. Umar is taking interracial away. You know, I mean, you guys familiar with Dr. Umar? I think so, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> He's from Philly? He's yeah. from Philly. Oh, from then North, I know him. From yeah. North Philly. Yeah. I know you know all the brothers <laughs> from Philly. I just wonder sometimes when I see interracial on, on camera, I'm like, yo, what would Dr. Umar say? Like, what's going to go down? Like, what's in his mind? I wonder if Denzel would do this right now with the whole Dr. Umar situation. We losing interracial out there. Dr. Umar got us. I, I, I got to tell you, I don't think Bill or I know how to respond to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna stare at you. I'm just saying. I got a, I got a beautiful black. Sister, I don't even know. There's a lot about. of bunny hoppers out there, and they can't bunny hop no more because Dr. Umar got them in check. So shout out to you guys, Craig. You fuck with Dr. Umar? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who Dr. Umar is. I'll, I'll send it around on the group text later. Okay. 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 That you. sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> Best quote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoy. I've been every kind of masseuse there is. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson in life: if if somebody you like says that to you, 
<laughs> Maybe break up with them. Right. Um, oh shit. I also like when Goodman comes into the room with the with the cocaine and all that, and he's like, guard, guard the door, CeeLo. All right, yeah. all right gentlemen, I need that table cleared and placed in front of Whip with a chair behind it. Now, please, I need a glass of water. water. I need a credit card. I need a $100 bill. Um, uh, do you have an SAS out of I do, one? actually. What do you got? This movie makes a lot more sense when you understand that Nick and Whip are dead the entire movie. Oh, so, you're saying this is a Top Gun Maverick situation? When the plane is inverted and flying over the hotel, you see Nick, Nick she's in, she's on the gurney, she's got the oxygen mask on, she's obviously OD'd, and then Whip crashes into a field full of angels with the people mm. in their robes, so obviously there's something about the symbol, symbolism of like the, 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 the congregants there. But even like you kind of mentioned, the James Badgedale character is sort of an apparition these three people are smoking in a hospital. He's probably the most famous man in Atlanta. She's somehow there. And that this movie is essentially their purgatory and that they have to like make things right before they move on. Oh, wow. And she does it by... And that's why she kind of has this sort of beautiful exit where she gets into the car and drives off into like a new life. Mm -hmm. And he eventually does too. He just needs to take like a kind of more like, you know spiritual accountability for what he's been doing and who he is and what it means to his kids. He makes the decision to go yeah, to purgatory Yeah, and you can say way. that, yeah. like, Cheadle is almost his lawyer in this whole thing, but, like, Goodman is the devil on his shoulder who's, mm -hmm. like, dragging him back into it. You mentioned that the So it's like heaven can wait. Yeah, and you said that your mom was, like, the the when she saw the mini fridge wow. that it's like, like the devil yeah. it's the devil it's basically the snake it's like it's like the temptation So that's why the mini fridge had so many bottles in it Yeah and it's you glowing. Do. It's like, you know, it's like... It, That's really interesting. It is interesting. I think it actually... I mean, I'm not saying that that is what the, the filmmakers intended, but I do think a reading of the film in that way makes some of the more odd parts about the movie click. Which, to be honest with you, throughout the... Even even a part in the in the movie there where they're, they're taking off and the, 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 the co-pilot goes, oh, God, and Whip goes, he can't help you now. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a, there's a weird underlay Marg, the the lady that she's very very religious. Yeah, like God is like pulling at him the entire time. The There's movie. also this weird stuff where it's like every time Whip walks into a bar, the plane crashes on the TV. Which is, I guess you could make an argument that that would be realistic. But most bars you walk into, it's just a basketball game or a football game is on. Like nobody's watching the news in bars. And another thing is like when he goes and meets Ken, the co-pilot. And he's like, there is only one judge, sir. Like, there is this idea that, like, he's basic. So I just thought that was interesting. Did you read this on, like, reddit.com you know slash what? I Denzel? I thought of it, and then I didn't <laughs> Google it on Reddit specifically because I was like, I like this idea, so I did not read it. That's really strong, CR. But I, but Some it, of your best work. I bet someone yeah. else has thought of it before, and to that person I say. Well, I'll tell you what. You better cite them or else you could lose your job But I didn't read about it, so, you yeah. know, that's like... Well, we thought Top Gun Maverick. There, yeah. were, we made a real case after that movie came out. We did the rewatch. That he that dies. In he the dies first test when flight. he's going point oh, ten when or whatever. He's going, like on that big, and then he just kind of lands, and he's all of a sudden at some bar, and it's ridiculous, and yeah. it's like he's dead. And then the rest of the movie is him kind of catching up with stuff. I have a hottest take as well. Yeah, she should have done the beast with two backs. <laughs> Two grand? She two thousand dollars? Yeah. She should have done. I, I'm sorry to follow up his beautiful spiritual, but like when I saw the movie this time, I was like, the, the guy came over. It was a fair offer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it could. It. it, it I feel like this movie has an anti-sex work underbelly. I won't <laughs> yeah. tolerate it. And so it made it seem like he I was, think it was, I part of the problem was that the 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 directing team was a little bit harsh. A little. I K thought the Kip one, and his homie. I thought the one guy was like. <laughs> Kip was nice. I thought they were yeah. trying to be cool. He was like, hey, he looks at her. He says, you have talent. Yeah. And we we have this. And he doesn't, he doesn't just say, come over here, get smashed out by Don. He says, we have an artistic perspective. Yeah. We have a point of view. We think that you can add to that $2,000. 2K. Those guys were kind of like the Coen brothers of porn, you know? Right. They're trying to get something. These were too bad. Great title. <laughs> That's odd. Mine is, uh, I have probably the worst one of the three. Sometimes I feel like cocaine gets a bad rap. 
Oh, because it's actually like this great equalizer. Yeah, yeah. Really helped out the really helped out Denzel in this movie. Maybe <laughs> maybe all the minutes. cocaine awareness ads and in the eighties should have should have had a disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? Maybe there's some positives, some side benefits. He's a little Doctor Freud kick thought up, so. Kicks yeah. up the energy. Yeah. I don't know. Danny McBride Award for playing yourself. Piers Morgan. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, he was in it. Yeah. The Cliff Booth Award. Is this movie better if the main character had a pet? We don't always get to do this. I, is this movie better if Denzel has like, I don't know, a, a white lab? <laughs> <laughs> or like a... So he can get the dog high on coke. Well, it does That's the gonna thing be where, one of the worst... No, he, where he comes animals. home and the dog's been alone for like two days. You're oh, so like, you want to add on, animal Denzel. cruelty into Whip's yeah, like Yeah, or it's just like, oh man, now even the fucking dog, like <laughs> maybe at the end, Kelly Riley takes the dog. Takes the dog. I think it probably would have been better if like, Kip, the porn director, had like an iguana. Oh, just okay. on his shoulder or something like, like that. an albino snake or something. Yeah. Casting what ifs. We only have Kelly Riley beating out Olivia Wilde and Dominique McElligot. Who is Dominique McElligot? I don't know who that is. But I know who Olivia Wilde well, is. That's an interesting idea. Interesting, I think she's too young at this point in 2012, but it's... She was super, super hot in her career at that point, though. Like interesting one. She was like on top of everybody's list. What do you have for Ruffalo, Hannah, and Rubinick Partridge overacting word, Chris? I think it's probably Goodman. I think In a so good way. Too. I yeah. love Goodman because he's our runaway winner of the Dion Waiters Award, unless you want to make a case for Trina or uh, Vicky Praise Jesus. I think that the Van made, wife. Made a, you've made a case for Trina, haven't you? Made a case for Trina. I think the case can be made. Um, I think it's a strong case. It's a very strong case. One of the strongest, but I think you got to get Goodman's it so Dion Waiters in this. Yeah. This the, is the it, definition. It, yeah. Right. He just comes in, hits three threes. Comes back in later, scores 12 points in two minutes, leaves. It's a, it, the only thing they, I wish they showed more of him doing the Cocoa Puff construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you make the, the, yeah. a close-up. And then he's like, obviously, in his, yeah. Best That Guy Award. We mentioned the, the lady from The Devil's Advocate, Tamara Tooney. I have her, yeah. I got Peter Garrity, who's the uh, airline owner, who's like, does your client know he's going to jail? What's he from? Oh, well, he's in the from wire. The wire. Yeah. Oh. The, ju the yeah. judge from oh, the yeah, wire. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, but also, Craig and I were talking about this beforehand. Is the implication that that guy owns the Braves? Yeah. That's pretty funny. <laughs> well, he said he, they're at the stadium. Yeah. yeah he's talking about, I just love baseball. I have a better Did one. Did MLB though. sign off on that? Were they like, yeah, sure, <laughs> she played there? <laughs> I have a better that guy, though. So he goes to the meeting and Two Bear Barry gives the long speech. Uh huh. That's the rat from. Uh, Dead Poet Society, oh, the bad guy. Oh, wow. You oh, just shit. bought yourself a ticket out of here, Nuwanda. <laughs> <laughs> That's that guy. Um, recasting a couch. Just can you can we do thought experiment or Ryan Gosling as the co-pilot? I think I think Garrity's really good. I think just putting in like a high, high level actor just in that bring other somebody, spot. just just some star power. Right. How about Viola Davis as the the flight attendant who survives instead of our devil's advocate she's lady. Not, come on, man. What? She's not going for that. That's a great part. She's not. She's not fucking around like that. She <sighs> fucking made Black Hat. Like she was just two years Hunger later. Games two. Yeah. Or whatever. She's come not, on. She's not. You know. Come on, guys. Was it disrespectful no. of Viola Davis? She's not coming in for two different scenes. She's in like four scenes. Melissa she's Leo got huge scenes. Melissa Leo, it's different. It's, that's, a, that's a different scene. That's a scene of authority. People love she's Denzel. All right, then let's make Viola Davis in the Melissa Leo scene. Viola Davis in the Melissa Leo scene. She, exactly. And Melissa Leo. That sounds in, great. Yeah, that February sounds great. right around the corner. You guys got to be more mindful. half ass internet <laughs> research. <laughs> flight was loosely inspired by the 2000 crash of Alaska Airlines Flight 261, which was caused by a broken jack screw. No survivors. Jesus um, Christ. They were able to fly the plane inverted near the end, and it didn't work. Flight was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. Robert Zemeckis, big plane guy. Yeah. I, no 16 shit. hours, 1600 yeah. hours of flight experience, which may be why he filmed two of the best plane crashes we've ever had. Um, the airline pilot community pissed about this movie. Why? Yeah. Patrick Smith said that Whitaker wouldn't have survived two minutes at an airline. And we shouldn't be slandered by his ugly character. They have very stringent testing. They sort don't want to have fucked up pilots. I'll get to Thank this God. picking nits. Yeah. Um, in real life, John Goodman sober since 07. Yeah. That's amazing. There's a movie called The Pilot with Cliff Robertson from 1980 where the title character 
is an alcoholic and has to make a risky decision and save the plane and pastures, then deals with the consequences and the addiction. I'm just going to mention that. Um, he sets the alarm for 714. This helps out your theory, CR. Mm. In the theme of faith, the Chronicles 714 reads, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal, heal their land. Another religious symbolism mm -hmm. thing. Um, Denzel, so this is really for Van. This is half fast internet research for Van about the opening scene. Oh. Yes. Denzel says, uh, over the years, part of his preparations, if he has a bed scene with his lady, with a lady in the movie. This is my favorite. I, I know this one. He takes them out to eat so they have oh, like, they feel so. better about hanging out. What a guy. Out. What a guy. What a So that it so seems guy. like they've known each other. Like there's yeah. a little bit of Here's this quote. When I did flight, the first scene we shot, she was supposed to be naked. So I thought maybe we ought to go out and have a bite to eat or something. Say hello and get to know each other a little bit before you got to walk around with no clothes on so all day. Where do you think Denzel Washington <laughs> takes Nadine Velasquez to eat? Probably like... Chili's? Yeah, something like, a like vegan that. place? No, no, like a J. Alexander. You know what I mean? Uh, Probably like uh, a steakhouse, right? Steakhouse. Somewhere yeah, somewhere like nice, somewhere yeah. classy. But just think about some of the women that Denzel has taken to eat. I, let me tell you something. <laughs> like, you There's know, been a few dinners. Yeah, well, you know, her, uh, 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 Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez. <laughs> like, hey, it's like who? Sonali Lathan. Sonali's taking some ladies out to eat. Yeah. Everyone in Mo Better Blues. Right. Uh, Cinda Williams, fucking beautiful. Billy Bob Thornton's ex wife. Mila Jovovich. Taking them oh, to eat. Yeah. It's been, there's he's been a few. Been, he's been, he's got a punch card. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, validate your like, parking. Like, quarter, <laughs> quarter table. Right. So, uh, Nadine Velasquez said she was a little put off by having to bend over right in front of Denzel with no clothes on because it's really, yeah. you know, a revealing. Yeah. So, she asked the makeup artist to give her a piece of flesh colored tape to protect her her parts so when she leaned over nothing so they filmed that part of the scene and then God they're doing the part it. when she climbs on him and they're waiting and they're moving the cameras around or whatever they're doing and denzel she, this is her telling the story denzel asked can i ask you a personal question she said yes and he asked is that a piece of tape that you have down there yeah he was looking at it wondering if it was a deformity and must have been confused because it was so close to her skin color and she told him, Denzel, you can't have it all. Oh, Jesus Christ. We getting busy on flight. That was from an interview with her. I'm telling you. Yeah. Apex Mountain. Wait, I, I have one more piece of half <laughs> okay. this research that Let's I... Let's hear it. I can't believe this is true. Kip, the porn, the porn director slash drug dealer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually is a pretty accomplished uh, film editor who edited Country Strong. Whoa! <laughs> Shout out to Liz Kelly. <laughs> Holy shit. Also, uh, the flight number 227, uh, it's uh, a superstition regarding Adds flights. Up to 11. Yeah, 11, yeah. Do you want to tell them the superstition? Uh, a number of spectacular airline crashes have had such flight numbers such as AA Flight 191, the DC-10 that lost an engine in Chicago and crashed in 79, and Delta Flight 191, that crashed as a result of a microburst in Dallas. In oh, see, now Van's going to start adding numbers when he's going up. No more. I already started up. looking at this shit. Like <laughs> Apex Mountain, Denzel, no. <clears throat> Nadine Velasquez. She's also on My Name is Earl at this point, so I'm going to say yes. Yeah, she's yeah. Apex. Kelly Riley, no. Zemeckis plane crashes. So I give you this or I give you Castaway? I think Let's this go. is better than Castaway. This is better than Castaway. We sure? It's. I think it's. I think it's better. Yeah. I think it's way more interesting. Yeah. Okay. Castaway is a very fucking like. That's a harrowing. Like, oh my god, it's fucked up. But this is like a step by step. This is better to me. I like when the guy's trying to help Chuck, and then he gets in the head, and he's like, ah. Oh. It's just like, wow, this crashing on a plane just seems like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> like people, the plane hasn't even crashed yet. People are like, ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Got Cammy the stewardess bouncing around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> addiction movies. I go leaving Las Vegas. This, leaving Las Vegas. So uh, leaving Las Vegas, I would say probably yeah, because it wins 
wins Oscar stuff, right? Yeah, train spotting, um, <laughs> working for a dream. Yeah, that's not gonna be in the rewatchables. That's a tough we should do movie. a that's not gonna be on the rewatchables month for that in United Recommend 93. Dream, that man. actually, to be honest with you. It would be hilarious, like unwatchable, <laughs> like just just movies. I that, never want to see this again. I that's, never want to see that Clint Eastwood Hillary Swank movie. Oh, Million Jesus, Dollar Baby! I won't watch get one second of that movie again. Like it, I was so angry. Like we did it on the Midnight Boys because Joni had never seen it before. He'd never uh, seen so, so, Million, Million Dollar Baby. So Joni had never seen Million Dollar Baby. Did he know what happened? Nope. And I was like, Joni, you in your wildest dreams cannot imagine how this movie is going to end. Yeah. And so we made him look at it. Like yeah. We made him watch it and then come back and report to us on the next podcast. He was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Movie won, and like, people every were like, Oscar. here's all the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> it's such a weird Oscars. Post Roseanne John Goodman for Apex Mountain. What else would be up there? Uh, like tons of Cohen stuff that he's done. Lebowski. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh, Lebowski, that, Lebowski oh, no, after Lebowski. Roseanne. That, that's Lebowski. It's Lebowski yeah. then, yeah. I'm, Atlanta? I'm going to say no. <laughs> Cocaine is a positive force. Yeah, sure, yeah, Bill. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> got a Coco Puff coming for you, big boy. Got a Coco Puff coming for you, big boy. All right, now here comes the banana, man. <laughs> Almost everything that Goodman, it's all post Roseanne. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely not. Yeah. Heroin and heroin batches called the Taliban. <laughs> Fuck Apex Mountain for that, right? Mm -hmm. Stroke Max. <laughs> Stroke Max. Hotel Mini Bars. It's best use of a yeah. hotel mini bar in a movie scene. I'm going to yeah. say yes. Mm hmm. Uh, we rarely get to do best racehorse name, but Whip Whitaker is just an amazing it's name dope. for a horse. It's like Whip Whitaker might win the triple crown. Coco Puff as well. Coco <laughs> Puff. <laughs> Banana, Boat. Banana Boat. Here comes Banana Boat. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Picking nits. I have a few. You want to go first? I mean, it's just... With all due respect, like no one notices that this guy like reeks of booze that has I had, cocaine. That's my first thing. He's point two nose. four drunk, and yeah. he just kind of waltzes into the plane. And they're like, "Hey, but what he's all sandwich." The coke, the, but you're still going to be emitting the well, booze. The, the co-pilot did notice. He said he smelled it on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I'm surprised that Margaret doesn't. I think she, the, she it, does. I think it's that she knows who he is. Oh, she said she's like, yeah. "I've known you for twelve years." She said, "I know, I've known you for that long." You're gonna tell me you went to dinner and you only had two drinks. I mean, he asked for a, a black coffee and like four aspirin. Like she knows what's yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. CR before the podcast, <laughs> same thing. Black coffee, banana man, <laughs> cocoa puff. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they would know. Um, would Katarina, aka Trina, be more scared on a super bumpy flight, knowing that she had just spent the entire night with this guy and done drugs and gotten super drunk and they never slept, and now he's in charge of this plane? Probably, but it's not the first time I would imagine. I also think that there's an interesting element of it's it's like a lot of that stuff is automated. So it's like even in the beginning when they're taking off and and uh, like I think Ken is like something like says something about autopilot and he's like, no, 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 we're flying today. He says, I'm flying today, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like, that's not really like you can probably let the autopilot take care of a lot of the flying. Hmm. I do think though that in Which that isn't to say that I want my pilot to be faded. First of all, yeah. I never even knew that you could take off with the autopilot. And when I, because this movie made me go Google a bunch of shit, you can't just take off with the shit. You can land with the shit. Yeah. Like the plane can fucking land itself, which is fucking weird. Um, but did he maybe want to, wasn't he trying to like fly super fast it, and push it was, through the... He was going like above the recommended airspeed to get oh, through yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, the cloud cover. Right, yeah. Right. They're not making sure the adjoining door in the hotel room isn't locked. Like really? Maybe just, just like that get out. that mini fridge out of there. Like, so, like there's no mini fridge. That's my thing. Like no mini fridge. Additionally, the security guard guy out front would have definitely heard Denzel up all night, destroying the shit, yeah. falling down. He was like, "Oh, quiet as a peep all night." There was bottles everywhere. Yeah. He like hit his head on the toilet. He didn't hear any of that. Yeah, there's an obscene amount of alcohol in the mini fridge. Maybe he's listening covered. to pods. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny. You go, there, there, you, go, you, you go out there. You go. You go out there. He's just listening to Rosillo. Right. <laughs> he's like life advice. Life great advice. this week. <laughs> uh, there's an obscene amount of drank bottles in the morning. Yeah, that just feels like the guy would be dead. I mean, there's, I would say, there's twenty drank bottles. That's maybe my more. biggest picking nit. Is he fucking Andre the Giant? Right. He is fucking creasing them. I don't yeah. know. Maybe 30 bottles. You build up top. But remember all the beer bottles, like everything that he's drinking, he is, and he that he never goes to the hospital. He never gets alcohol poisoning. And I know guys with 
high yeah. tolerances, but he's not he's not that big of a dude. Um, why didn't they just postpone the hearing? Just say he had food poisoning. There's something like kind of yeah. I I mean I think that better outcome than having uh the banana boat come in. I know. I think there's something inevitable and, about he has to eventually face the judge. You know. Yeah, I would have gone with the food poisoning excuse. Any other picking nets? O- only, only one is I would have brought him to my house closer to the time that he needed to testify. Like I give him like three days sober. Oh yeah. Like yeah. it's instead of, like you get to start two days, ten days, it's gonna start itching a little bit. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast are untouchable. I got a there's prequel an interesting and a prestige sequel. TV piece to this. Yeah, and a prequel too. Prequel would be Whip and Charlie in the Navy. Oh, that's oh. Good. It's pretty fun. Sequel would be Whip being shot caller in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just watched Shot Caller again. Oh, wait, what's this? We're officially scouting it. Yeah. It's being scouted for the 24 slate. You got you got your guys watching. Yeah, I got my guys. You guys are watching Yamamoto. Four scouts yeah. at the last shot caller screening on no Stars 3. Business liking that movie as much as I did. It's it's, it's so just good. like it's awesome. So, it's just Stars like no business liking that movie as much as I did. He's so frail and then he becomes the fuck is no fucking business like We wouldn't have prison did. movie month. It'll just be prison movie year. <laughs> 2025 prison movies. Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hahn, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, Byron Mayo, Harling Mays, or Philip Baker Hall? Harling Mays is disqualified. So I would say that uh, this movie is 18 times funnier if Sam Jackson is Whit Whitaker. I had that. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> bro, I, I, I had... he's just like, I said, roll it, motherfucker. <laughs> That would be fucking incredible. I also had, if I, I said Sam could play either uh, Whip or he could play John Goodman's character. Oh, yeah. Which would give us the Denzel. It's Sam. the banana boat, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Open wide, big dog. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> Sam Jackson is Harley Mays, I think, is better. Uh, I mean, like, that Sam, so I, I would funny. love to see the Sam version with Whip, but was I, I talking to you? I don't <laughs> think Wayne Jenkins think? can be in any movie where someone calls someone else Big Dog. There's already enough Wayne Jenkins in it, mm. but I do think that Harling Mays. We should go back and do the previous 300 rewatchables of Harling Mays. And <laughs> mm. just, so I was well, thinking, he's, like, he's here for the future. If Harling Mays was in the the company in Pri- Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. When Giovanni Rabisi gets <laughs> shot, and he's just like, focus up, big dog. <laughs> Here's a train coming to you. Keep it down, big dog. <laughs> it's just like in France. That'd be good. Uh, I was thinking if, if Byron Mayo was in the first scene. <laughs> Put some pants on. You're gonna get this big dog round up again. <laughs> oh fuck! Just one Oscar. Who gets it? Denzel. Denzel Washington. Can I make a case for the screenplay? Hmm. Sure. Yeah. This is about as well written of a screenplay as we're getting the last 15 years, just from what they're trying to do and actually pulling it off and building all these different characters. It would be. It would have been a cool win. What won that year? Uh, it was Tarantino. Oh. It was written by uh, John Gattins. He worked on it for like a really long time. What yeah. are the best screenplays? Like Whiplash, fucking... Yeah, it's like, it's, it's for me, Django. it's in that whole group of yeah. when we talk about like, oh, that's a really original piece of work with cool characters that's memorable and rewatchable yeah. and the whole thing. I, I think it's, I think it's on there. Uh, probably unanswerable questions. I, look, Whip... Everyone's a hero in their own story, as Dave Jacoby has always said. And Whip can make the case, like, I'm the only person who could have landed that plane. They simulated it 10 times. Maybe the plane got a little fucked up because he flew it through the most turbulent right. path possible and jostled some shit. And maybe he was to blame ultimately anyway. Just throwing it out there. Mm. It's unanswerable. I, mm. I want to know, like, could he really have gotten the toxicology report struck? Like, the lawyer, when Hugh was like, Congratulations, big win for us today. I got your tox report struck. Like that just seems like one of those things where yeah, it's like, they're not yeah. going to strike that on a technicality. You know what I mean? Or it would get leaked that this happened. You right. know what I mean, yeah. Could you really invert an airliner? It, they 
So the, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of internet stuff on this. Popular Mechanics had a piece on it. Theoretically, you can do it. It could immediately risk engine failure. They said conceivably this could work because the inversion, um, it would it would basically stave Slow off stuff that down. was happening. I Slow thought it did down. happen. Yeah, that's what you said. Like they 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 inverted the plane, right? But it crashed. Well, the question is not if you can invert it, is if you can turn that motherfucker back over once you've inverted it. So that's right? what Popper Mechanics yeah. said. You'd want to increase power if needed, flip and land quickly because once once you righted the plane, it would it would crash down again. Right. So you would almost have to flip it right before you're on the ground for it to work. But it could it could happen. Uh Next unanswerable question: What is a banana boat? Like ultimately, what do we think? If we all had to go around, and I think he's just say, more saying that, like you, you're, you're, you're down. You got a lot. Of, you're hungover. You're drunk. The banana boat's gonna take you to the beach. We're gonna get. We're gonna get, get you get back well. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What did Harling Mays do for a living? Uh, he think he dealt a little time drug dealer. Yeah, Pro- probably made a little book. What was his W two two form that he filled out? <laughs> like he was spiritual oh, advisor. Worked at a sports card store. <laughs> He's a welder or something. <laughs> like that. He was in sports card nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, drunk flight attendants. What I don't know. Maybe bring him back. Is that, an, un- is that an unanswerable question? So, was it more fun if flight attendants seem a little drunker? I think it, shit would get really wild up in the air right now yeah. if you had if you had drunk flight attendants who were fighting with I like drunk. It. If they're drunk. I like it's a little more festive. Yeah. Well, yeah. Have a drink. It's like when the bartender, when you're at a bar and the bartender's like, yeah, I'll do a shot with you. I think that if that's the case, if we want to do that, we should start uh, de- designating like, this is the fucked up plane and this is the sober plane. I've always been with that. It's called Spirit Airlines. <laughs> right. I've always been with that. One plane, let the flight attendants drink, no kids, like what, let the whole night. Party flight. The, yeah. yeah, party flight. All right, here's my big one for you. What song has been more overused in movies? Give Me Shelter or Sympathy for the Devil? Sympathy for the Devil. For By me. the Rolling Stones. Yeah, I think so. I actually did the research on this. So okay. you guys have to answer and then I'll tell you. I, the I think sympathy. I go sympathy for, uh, for the Devil. Okay. Sympathy for the Devil was in Focus, Flight, Suicide Squad, Interview of the Vampire, or Tropic Thunder, Coming Home with John Voight and, uh, and Bruce Dern and Jane Fonda and Cruella. Those are the only movies it's ever been in? Those were the ones that I could find on the internet. Oh. Sh- Give Me Shelter, Flight, Goodfellas, The Departed, Casino, Ford versus Ferrari, The Gambler, The Fan, Lair Cake and Adventures in Babysitting. It's actually been in more movies. Hmm. Interesting. I love Adventures in Flight is the only movie that doubled down doubled. and said we're going to so do Marty both. Even never... Scorsese. Yeah. Scorsese yeah. had never done that one. But yeah, I thought it was funny. Scorsese used Gimme Shelter in three different movies. And in, in arguably his three most rewatched movies. Best double feature choice of this movie. What do you got? I had Castaway. Fearless. I had Fearless. The Indian Reds want Nate Award. What happened the next day? We know. What do you think happened to Kelly Riley? Married with kids? Yeah, she became. <laughs> <laughs> she went somewhere. She's probably a YouTuber now. Any regrets about the beast with two backs? Or oh no? yeah, about what could have been. Yeah, uh, maybe she comes back and she does OnlyFans. I don't know. I just don't think we should rule out sex work as like a. <laughs> Does bad she know thing. stepmom porn's coming? Like she milf the whole deal. She's right on the edge. <laughs> she's got her own camera. Do it for yourself. Uh, what piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? Goodman's travel case. Cocoa Puff. Cocoa Puff. Yeah. 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 The Coach Finstock Which order. guy here at this table, because the best part is when he's like, somebody make me a Cocoa Puff. And Bruce Green was like, what the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> and Don Gino's like, give me the cigarette. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Finstock Award, best life lesson. Sometimes you have to crash a jetliner to realize you should stop drinking. Mm. Yeah. That was my life lesson. No? I think that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. yeah go with that. You want to do a little more Byron Mayo? <laughs> Is the third third person in the hotel room? Byron Mayo storming out of the bathroom when, when they do Velasquez. Jesus, who dropped a bomb in there? <laughs> God damn it, Trina. Come on, Whip. We can fly to Atlanta. It's just 45 yeah. minutes. Just dump that co pilot. Get me in there. Uh, all right. And who won the movie? We got Denzel. Denzel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Producer Craig, let's hear it. Uh, I pretty much agree with you guys on everything you said about this movie. The 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 opening scene, I'm not the easiest flyer either. I don't know why. Like, last five years, haven't been an easy flyer. This movie, I mean, I'm sitting, on, like, watching this on a laptop in a room, and I'm, like, terrified. Couldn't have imagined watching this in a theater. 
genuinely easily the, the most like harrowing plane crash. I don't know, maybe any scene ever. Uh, the most stressful it's that I've ever seen. Terrifying, yeah. Yeah, um, we should have mentioned in What's Age the Worst that the movie theater experience of that scene. Oh my god! Just versus like I'm, watching on your laptop the, 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 the or the it was yeah. it was loud. That's what I loud that's, ass. And it, it, it was amazing. The come down is so hard after yeah. that in a movie theater. I know, but I do I do feel that like this is a first twenty five, last twenty five kind of movie. I wanted one time in the middle. I wanted him to fly that little putt putt plane with her. I thought like seeing him one more time get up there, mm. like a little drunk. Yeah. I thought would have been Maybe awesome. that could have been the extra scene with them. Mm -hmm. Like they were teasing it and I was like, oh great. I just think it needed one more like action-y scene to like kind of yeah. reel you back in and like, you know, like a little Cocoa Puff in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> little Cocoa Puff. Right. Did this movie need a Cocoa Puff? Yeah. Yeah. Good category. Um, but also Chris's They Were Dead the Whole Time theory. That's probably the best one I've ever heard and it made me like think about this movie completely differently. I, I've just seen this movie a few times. I, I It's, it's so really good, weird that they're doing white robe baptism in the middle of a field it's there. the most like, believable one I've ever heard so I like I said like if that's mm. somebody else's had that idea before me it's I'm I like sorry. it I like it too thanks <laughs> <laughs>